Would you say jobs are readily available for pharmacists in the UK? Yes, I would say jobs are readily available. However, it depends on your flexibility and the openness of your mind. Hi guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Laju. If you're new here, you are highly welcome. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you and welcome back. Today, I have with me once again a special appearance in the person of Ifedola Ko Ajamu. She's a friend and a colleague. She's a pharmacist in the UK. And today, she'll be sharing with us the things you should know before relocating to the UK as a pharmacist, how to get registered in the UK as a pharmacist. Thank you very much, Ife, for accepting my invitation. You're welcome. Yeah. Thank you for having me. It's a delight to be on the show. <laughs> so if uh, i know you have a youtube channel where you share your experience and your journey as a pharmacist as a nigerian pharmacist in the uk well done with that and how has it been how has your experience been in the uk so far as a pharmacist well it's been um exciting it's been interesting honestly because uh, i remember back home when i used to uh, try to enforce some things and they used to tell me <laughs> you're not meant to be in this country so apparently um the practice here pretty much describes the kind of pharmacist I've always wanted to be. So yeah, it's interesting. So if you're that kind of person that has always been like, maybe like a very strict kind of pharmacy, like you would never sell coding over the counter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think oh. the UK is- Nice is to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so my first question today is, um, would you say relocating to the UK as a pharmacist is a straightforward process? Not really, honestly, but it depends on you. But yeah, it's it's a fairly it's a fairly um, okay process to be honest. Because if I compare it to some other countries, I'll say UK is um, straightforward. Because all you need to do is go to school, write your exams, do your training, and write your exams again, and then you're a pharmacist, and you you would get a job as well. So yeah. All right. So you mentioned going to school. Does that mean everyone, any pharmacist planning to relocate, has to go to school and do a master's? Yes. So um. Basically, there's, there are two options when you're coming here. Is it a diploma or a master's degree? A diploma is for nine months and a master's degree is, of course, one year. However, for you to be qualified to do the training, the one-year training afterwards, you must have stayed in the country for a minimum of a year. And it's only the master's that is going to avail you that opportunity. So if you just want to convert your degree, fine, you just do the diploma and go back home. But if you really want to stay back, then you've got to do the master's. The difference is you stay for three months extra when everybody has gone ahead to do their training, you would be doing your master's and then you join the second course because there's a July and a September, that's like end of August slash beginning of September course. So you'll be doing the September course. And that means your exams as well will also be the September one because there's a June and September exams. Okay. All right, just um, one question um, about the master's. Is there any kind of master's you can do or is there a specific master's program you should? apply for okay so if you were already a pharmacist in your country there is a route that we come through and that is called the overseas pharmacist assessment program ospa mm -hmm. and that's what my page is about so yes you you have to come through the ospa route and the program on its own is ospa pgd or ospa master's degree so not just any master you can come in and do your normal pharmacy masters but that doesn't qualify you to be a pharmacist here mm -hmm. you can do like masters in pharmacy what maybe clinical pharmacy um, um pharmaceutical chemistry or whatever but you will not still practice you it's just normal masters you still have to probably go back home or do this conversion if you want to oh, all right that makes sense thanks for that all right so can, can you just quickly outline the steps you know required to practice in the uk just to run through for us since you have most of the information on your page already, on your channel already. Oh, yes, yes. So on my channel, there are like videos I explain everything. But yes, I can do like, um, yes, I can do a bullet point of what you need to do. So basically, um, you need to make up your mind you're coming to the UK. Like, you need to make up your mind. That one, I'm sure they can find on your page. So everything, I'm sure Lajo has explained explicitly. And once you've made up your mind, you really want to come, then you need to go online on the GPAT website. Now they have changed it to, to pharmacy regulation. Before it was the GPAT website, now it's pharmacyregulation.org, where you find the form under the OSPAP session, you find a form, you fill it, you pay your fees. There's like about 700 pounds fees to pay. 
then you write your IELTS exams. You need to get seven across board and seven overall, basically. And once you get your IELTS, before you even start your application at all, you need to have your IELTS. After which you then get your letter of good standing from PCN. If you're coming from Nigeria, you need to get your letter of good standing from PCN. Then you need to get two references from either your lecturer in school and then your current employer if you're working. You send that over to kickstart the process. Then when that is all, when that is all gone, they will give you like a document to say like an admission letter by the GPAT to say that, oh, you are accepted to do the program. Then you now start the process of applying to schools. Then you think of the schools that you want to go to. Everything is on like, you know, how to choose the schools and everything. You need to do like your, your research. Then you apply to the school. You come to the school like you're coming for your master's. For those that have come for master's, you pretty much know the process. But if you've not, you apply to the school, you do your program then you write an exam at the end of school which which is normal like you know normal going in school once you pass you go and do your internship which we used to call pre-reg however now they've changed it to foundation year which is a new video i'll be releasing soon to explain all the process of the new of the new training process so before now we used to do a, a pre-registration year which is what we call internship back home then after that one again, you now write a final exam. That one is a national exam. Everybody writes it. it everybody sits for it at the same time all over the UK. Mm. And the result comes out after a month. If you pass, then you go ahead to become a pharmacist. Mm -hmm. With the new structure now, you go ahead to become a pharmacist prescriber. That means you're like a mini doctor. That's why I call it. That's why I call us. You become a mini doctor with the new training. I think they are starting next year now because they've been They've been talking about it and they finally sent a bulletin to say that it is kicking off soon because of course with everything that is happening now, doctors are overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's it pretty much. I mean, you become a pharmacist. Okay. And so you get paid for the training. You get paid for the training now. That's good to see. That's good to hear. So um the entire process takes about how long? It depends on um Already you are, like I said, you need to have made up your mind and then you have gathered your documents. I mean, when I applied for mine, within, within a month, I, I got the approval from the GPHC, but then I, I deferred by like a year. But if you have all your documents together, like you have your IELTS, you have your letter of good standing, you have your references, the GPHC are very fast in response. I don't know about COVID and everything, but I think it's still pretty much the same thing because now it's even easier. Before we have to post things through DHL, Mm. Now everything is online. It's okay. pretty much yeah. an email. So once the documents are ready, I'll say maximum of a month to get your approval from GPHC. Then the next step will be, um, you know, dealing with the schools. So in total, say three months. So if you want to, if you want to resume in September this year, you still have plenty enough time. They mm. usually give a cut off. Yes, the GPHC used to give a cut off to say if you want to start school in September, you must have done your application by May. Mm. So by May of this year, if you want to resume in September, you must have put in everything. But I remember that year, I did all my application around August, September, and I was still given the go-ahead. But, you know, it was really tight, and that was why I couldn't start that year. Mm. All right. Thanks for that. So um, I think my final question really is, would you say jobs are readily available for pharmacists in the UK? Yes. I would say jobs are readily available. However, it depends on your flexibility and the openness of your mind. Be ready to go anywhere. So if you're somebody that says, oh, I have to be in London or I have to be in Birmingham or I have to be in Scotland because my brother or my sister is there, you might get a job. But I mean, if you're coming, you need to have an open mind. Mm. I remember that I did my schooling somewhere up north. I did my pre-registration year up south and my house was west midlands so you need to be open you need to be open-minded if you're open-minded there are jobs everywhere but if you really need to be at a particular region then you might be lucky it takes i mean <laughs> there's nothing grace can't do you get a place and then but then you need to have your visa as well so if you're somebody that needs a sponsor if you need a sponsor then you need to be open-minded because it's wherever your sponsor was to send you that you have to go. Because mm. if you say you want to stay in London and there are no sponsors in London, then you might just get stuck. Mm. The sponsor part, is that after your pre-reg or during your pre-reg? Before the pre-reg. So while you're in school, for you to be in the UK, you need a sponsor. Mm. 
Oh, oh okay. So is it that your parents are citizen? Is it that you're a citizen? So you maybe like your parents are bringing you, so you're your you're your sponsor. Oh, okay, that's or, what you mean. Yeah. So if you're working, if you're in school, the school is your sponsor. Mm. Yeah, because they will give you like the certificate to apply for your visa. Oh yeah. Then when you want to do your period, because it is a job, yeah, you are getting paid for it. Yeah. You need a sponsor as well, so your employer will be your sponsor for that year. And after which, when you're done, most times some some of them don't retain, except if you go to all those big multiples, they might retain you and then they'll continually be your sponsor. However, if you go to like maybe small independent, mm -hmm. after the one year, your contract is over, you need to move on to get a proper job as a pharmacist. You would mm -hmm. also need the sponsor. So most times you might need to move because of your period wherever you get sponsored for your period. And when you're done again, you might need to also move far away again to get a job as a pharmacist. Mm -hmm. So basically it's just, you know, where your yeah. sponsor is. And some people get married or maybe like they already came under the visa of their spouse. Then in that case, you can choose and stay wherever you want to stay. But you just need a sponsor anyway. So is it your spouse, your spouse, your parents, or an employer? Thank you so much. I'm sure your YouTube channel, you have so much information packed. And I would encourage my viewers to please check out Ninja Pharmacist in UK, all right, for more information on this. If I thank you so much for your time, I really appreciate it. It would be very helpful. So that's it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Once again, thank you, Ife. I really appreciate you coming today. Please don't forget to like today's video and subscribe to my channel if you haven't. Bye.